Oh, that's it. What's up? How you guys doing? Today, we have a vibe. Good vibes. That's what's going on. That's right. Because this is the new, the newer model of the vibe. The older one sucks. This one, I don't know if I've ever actually tinted one of these. Maybe once. But anytime I got a vibe, it was always the older model vibe. These things just, they were around and then they completely disappeared. The back window is so much easier on one of these. So very happy to have this one here. What up? Hope all is well. Yeah, things are going good. Staying busy. I had to go get a, I had to go get that, a title for that class car yesterday. So, got that done. Today we got this one. Things are going good. Black Swan, Omar, Christian, Sergio. <laughs> You're my boy. <laughs> oh, I still feel like I'm waking up. I had a bit of a, a later morning. My son woke up at like eight, which for a lot of people, that's great. For me, that's still early. And it's like, no, 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 I don't have to be at the shop till 10 get back to sleep so then I had like an extra half hour so I like half fell asleep and now I'm like oh shit I guess I gotta be awake now so we're gonna get going on coffee what car uh it's an Ultima that was the one that we had in the background last stream so I bought a 2010 Ultima off a of marketplace and it's it's <laughs> it's marketplace it is probably the best training car uh, that I could find so really really happy with it but I can drive it on the road too so Full window tent. Uh, every all the sides in the rear, the windshield is cracked, so there's no no way to sell a windshield on that one. Oh no no no! This one is vibe. That's the title. Good vibes. Thought we were talking about the class car. This one. This one is the classic vibe. Oh dang, where's the other thing? It's where I need to I need to invest. It's hard to buy something that you already have just as a second use case. So like these mics are awesome and I like them a lot. But it would really help to have a second set. Especially with keeping things charged. It's one of those things that, you know, a couple hundred bucks, okay, I'll probably get it. 300 Do you do in-person training? I do. Uh, yeah, we do classes every month right now, up through the end of the year. Or a couple months. I don't know, I gotta figure out November. But that's, that's a ways. Um, so we have a class 18th to the 20th, but that's filled. The next one's going to be, I don't know, one, two, I think the 16th to the 18th. No, the 23rd to the 25th, right? That's the next one. In May. It's almost filled. Do you ever get new charging cables? Maybe. What the heck? Oh, there it is. Oh, that was weird. Okay, cool. At least it works. What GoPro? Uh, I have the 10. The 9, I think, is better. Uh, better now. Because I picked up the 9 
soon as it came out, and the colors were just weird. And it looked worse than my 8, so I returned it immediately. And then as soon as the 10 came out, they made some more changes. So part of the, the deal is not the GoPro. It's this, this that I have attached to it. So I've got basically a whole budget Hollywood setup here. The Renault Clio has two small windows on the side made of plastic. You can't tint them. Um, not with window film. You're going to have to use, like, some people will use taillight film from what I've heard. I don't know the Clio specifically, but I have seen, like, some cars with a weird, like, they're plastic with a weird, like, handle cut out. Kendall Roberts super chatted $4.99. Hey. hey, buddy, sorry it's been so long. Hope you're doing good. Kendall! Kendall with a five. Hey, buddy, sorry it's been so long. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a while. Uh, yeah, things are going well. Things are going real well here. Just told my customers. Uh, thank you so much for the five. I appreciate that a lot. Just told my customers about your class, and he says he should be signing up as he wants to learn learn it as a side hustle. Oh, cool. Very cool. But yeah, on those, those ones that I knew uh, with, like, the plastic windows, like, people were doing, like, taillight film or something else because, yeah, you can't just put tin on them. Can't tell if I want to fly or drive. It's seven hours each way. Oh, that's not too bad. That is a good, good overnight drive, though. Patrick's shop looks killer. Nice. That's cool. Glad to hear it. Yeah, he's, uh, I know he just moved into that thing. He's been working hard on it. That's awesome. Um, vinyl wrap them black as an option. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of stuff. That's where I said, like, I don't even know if taillight film's going to look quite right. Um, but, eh, no, it should be okay. I mean, other people were doing them, not me, so. I'm doing a black wrap on the outside now. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Well, there you go. I got a Sentra that has 1,000 miles on the car, and I don't want to put Seven hours of driving. <laughs> yeah, I can appreciate that. <laughs> Did you buy it or is it a lease? Because if it's a lease and you're restricted by miles, I definitely understand that one. Okay, um, that's all good. All right, looks like we're we're doing good here. Let's get started. I bought it for cash. Nice. Same thing. That's what I did with the Altima, but it's got a few more miles than a thousand on it. It's got a. Uh, <sighs> It's got 180,000 miles on it. <laughs> yeah, the market is kind of crazy right now. Oh, this is 50. I'm going to set this aside. I know what 50 that is. So welcome to the good vibes. Um, these are pretty straightforward. You have normal side seals, pretty standard bottom seal. The front curves up a little bit. This gets in the way slightly. Nothing crazy at all. Back windows, very normal. Quarter windows gives you lots of space. And they have a teeny tiny back window um, with a brake light in the way. But if you look on the inside, they have a little bit of space here. So I don't even have to remove that. I'll just sweep behind there. And when I'm installing it, just 
zoop, and then zoop, and then and that's it. So uh, yeah, that's the vibe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you in the next one. Let's get started. Oh no, T Swift gonna demonetize me. That is scary business. I'll put on T-Swift, but uh, sorry, I can't do that through the stream. <laughs> I've been demonetized too many times lately from weird music coming from next door. That was strange. <laughs> like, my last four videos have all been flagged. I'm glad that they seem to be pretty sympathetic, though. YouTube's done real, real well. So whenever a video gets flagged, um, it's not the same as a strike. Strikes don't happen near as much anymore, and they don't seem to be as they don't seem to be what they used to be. I'm not trying to stream Hell's Kitchen or anything. Are you gonna cut around the third brake light? No, not if I can't help it. <laughs> Daniel Rayner super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Kumu star master Matt, I'm poor after the past stream. <laughs> you know you could just comment, right? Thank you. Daniel Reyna, thank you for the five. You know you can just comment. That is a thing. You don't always have to super chat. I do appreciate it. I even said... <laughs> I even said many times, people don't have to super chat that much. And then I can't stop you guys. Exactly. He could have bought 20 Lowe's tapes. <laughs> Can you explain the sticker in between the film and the glass in Minnesota? Uh, I can't. Because I actually don't know. I know Texas has something like that. Where every tint shop is supposed to be registered with the state. And there's supposed to be like an ID sticker placed in like the lower corner of one of the windows um, to identify which shop did the tint job because they're a lot more strict about local laws. But I'm not as familiar um, with individual state laws. Michigan is kind of a an all or nothing type of state. So you can have as dark as you want on the back. Nothing on the front except the top four inches. Unless you have a doctor's note. And then you're free and clear to, I mean, they don't specify. So you, as far as I know, you're free and clear to do whatever you want. But there's probably like reasons you could get a ticket for doing five on your windshield with a doctor's note. But it was super cool. I had a, had a client the other day. I mean, I just assume everybody has one, but he was just like, yeah, while well, you're tuning the car, I just went and I got one. Cool. Ordered pre-cut Geo from Tint Zoom. Tint is hazy and the pattern is really bad. Not gonna lie. Oh, that's not good to hear. What tint did you get from them? Like which which lineup? I got my medical exempt letter, so I can now legally tint darker than fifty percent. Nice, that's awesome. Peace of mind. Can you explain? Oh yeah, yeah, that one.
Oh, and the pattern was really bad. That's no good. I've heard good things about them. So, that's not good. So, I've been told they use a lot of software. Like, many different softwares, not just one. So they're better about patterns, but that's kind of the thing about it's kind of the thing about pre-cuts is some do well and some don't do well. The Pro Nano Ceramic. If it's hazy, that doesn't sound like Pro Nano. So that's not good. Because the Pro Nano I install, I definitely don't feel as hazy. And I'd have people requesting me to take it off. So, uh-oh. I don't know. One. I probably should have wiped these off. These definitely have a lot of build up. How do you go about rain guards? Um, if they're removable, then then take them out. So WeatherTech kind of took over the industry. And you'll see a WeatherTech go from like here, and they usually are pressure fit and go all the way down the front edge. So you can, you can pop them out. They're pretty flexible too. That was always a worry with uh, cheaper rain guards. Because some of them you'd try and take out, they'd be pressure fit, and they'd bake in the sun all day. And you know, after a few months, <laughs> you go to take them out, and then they disintegrate. But weather techs were always pretty, pretty good, actually. I don't know how they took over, but they took over. They probably just bought everybody. Um, so I'll take those out, and then if they're just the stick-on ones that stay up here, uh, you just leave them in. But as far as putting them back in, it's kind of a toss-up on the vehicle. If, if it's like an F-150, yeah, no big deal. I'll roll the seal, I'll roll the windows back down, put them in, roll them back up. It is good to dry. You, you want to make sure you dry the top edge of the film before you roll them up, though. Because as you're rolling them up, that rain guard adds <laughs> quite a bit of thickness up there. So the tent is going to roll up in the window and <laughs> has a chance of crunching. So dry out the top of the window a little bit, and you should be OK. Um, but it's not uncommon to just leave them out and say, hey, just pop them back in after a few days so you don't have to feel like you're responsible for them. It's an aftermarket thing. So it's nice to just put them back in for, for the client. But I used to not do it a lot because like, hey, I want my tint to dry right, so. Now I don't worry too much.
Hey, Matt, here's, here's one for you. I tuned in a Honda CVR yesterday. A customer called later and said the outside door handles were faded. Good thing they took a picture before they left proof. Wow. The d tinning faded the door handles. Oh, my God. <laughs> How does that... Yeah, when I brought my car to you, everything was great. And then... You faded my door handles by tinning it. Like how, what, what would even, what's the argument there? Yeah, nice. So I had one yesterday that freaked me the hell out. Um, there were no problems though, but I had a brand new 22 Cherokee um, for the sunroof and front doors. So I do the front doors. And then I do the first panel on the sunroof. And then I, I throw towels over the back seats and cut the, uh, cut the panel out on top. And then I was going to jump in and clean the inside and install it. And that's when I noticed there was a slice in the armrests on the captain's chairs in the rear. And I just like, I like freaked out. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell even could cause this? And he was waiting up front. So I like scramble up front. I'm like, yo, I just noticed this. I haven't even gotten in the back of the vehicle yet. I just tossed covers over the seats. There is a huge slice in your rear armrest. And he's like, yeah, I saw that already. The dealership is taking care of it. So I don't know what happened. I just got the vehicle two days ago. It was probably when they were unwrapping the seats or something. But yeah, there was like a razor blade slice in the armrest. Easily something that could have fallen back on me. And it sucks because there's no practical way of catching something like that unless you're like super thorough on the interior <laughs> as well as the exterior. But yeah, you want to try and document and make people aware of situations like before <laughs> you pull in a car because you that shit can bite you so fast most people are pretty straight up but every once in a while you get somebody that's looking to get something for free try and take advantage of of a good shop or something he was super cool so I just like oh my god just something that could you could blame it on anything, pretty much. But it was so new. That's probably something a dealer would fix anyways. Can you put... Can you put ceramic tint over a dyed tint sun strip? Yeah, you can. So this goes with any full windshield. When you have a sunstrip, um, it's like, so sunstrip's gonna go to about here or wherever. Um, there's a thickness to that tint. And any time tint overlaps something, there's always an air gap. So the only thing is you're gonna see an air gap along your entire windshield there. But generally, your windshield, like 5% strip, lighter windshield, Certain lights, it's not terrible, but the better way to do it is just peel the strip off, then tint the full windshield, and then put a strip back on it. But I've done just a full windshield over a strip before. It's The only person that's really going to notice it is you, though. <laughs> but it is going to be there. T-Town, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by in my live. Upgraded my internet and my passenger side. Didn't like my Wi-Fi and phone calls. The passenger side of the car didn't like the Wi-Fi? Oh, no. Isn't it? Dude, this stuff is so funny. I don't, I can't tell you how many like weird quirks. So I have a Bluetooth antenna for my headset. And yeah, when I'm on this side of the car, um, on a bigger vehicle, I have to have that position just right or else I lose my headset too. Everything seems totally fine, and then you try and do this stuff, and then you never know what situations. 
What platter do you have, by the way? That's that sucker is loud. <laughs> I I had to look up the difference between a stepper stepper motor and a servo motor, and I've never got to hear it in a plotter before. I just like little vinyl cutters. So when I did a video on that thing, I got to hear the difference, and but never on a bigger machine yet. So that thing is super quiet in comparison. <laughs> but as long as it works, I just thought it was really funny. It's like, it sounds like an old uh, modem. <laughs> What's a good measurement for a tin shop? No trucks. What do you mean? I have an SC2. How much, uh, how much is that one? Because when, when people ask me about plotters, you know, this is about as low as I've gone. So I'm always curious about other other machines out there and what people are using, so. Tin in an old car years back, just two front windows, then she came back and said the AC wasn't working. 800 bucks for his platter, damn. Oh, okay, that's a big difference. Getting a letter, was asking why about the sticker. I would like to tempt myself and save a few hundred dollars. That's why operator. Oh, okay, I see. That's why I was asking about the sticker because I would love to tint it myself and save a few hundred dollars. I can't guarantee you <clears throat> when you go to tint your own car that you'll save, save a bunch of money because there's a lot to learn. Um, some people can do uh, can get it done, but expect some mistakes. Because honestly, look at look at tinning this way. If you're looking to learn it as like as a side hustle, as a hobby, as a career, people buy lots of film tools and they invest quite a bit into it. Um, doing a couple of doors, you'll get. You get iffy results, but a couple of doors isn't too bad. If you want to do like a whole vehicle, um, and like it's a standard SUV, <clears throat> still same concept kind of applies to the front doors for most of it, but there's a lot of work involved. There really is. So it's hard to say if you're really going to save money, but you'll definitely learn a lot. I can guarantee you that much. I need my squeegee. It's a 13 Hyundai Sonata. It's a good practice car. So it's definitely not on, it's not high up there for like difficult cars to do but you still have to learn all the same concepts. Shrinking, doors, cutting, installing, all that fun stuff. Did you do a video from Walmart? Oh yeah, yeah, the Walmart video? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done a few. So it was like a door window. <laughs> I had to do like a defroster splicing method uh, when I did a back window with it though, because the rolls weren't long enough. I need my windows wrap. Well, we only do tinting here. We don't do window wraps. <laughs> I 
I've been detailing. I've been detailing for or tinning for three months and was detailing for six, but I've made more just doing tint. You want to know a little secret? Tinning makes more money than detailing. Detailing is just easier to get into. Anybody can clean their carpets. I see this a lot. There's like a big trend of start your own mobile detailing business. I made thousands of dollars doing mobile detailing, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, yeah, detailing's a grind. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, window tinting is a grind to learn, but <clears throat> you can spend a couple hours on a tint job when you get better. You can still spend a long time on a detail. You know, I looked at it this way with like remote start systems too. It's like remote starters and stuff, you're always like tucking yourself under the dash and whatnot. And like, I'm, I'm good. We gotta get in and out of some tight cars, but. Why is it over here? I gotta figure out phone. I don't know. I can tint a full car in four to five hours, but through watching your videos has inspired me to just take on tinting no matter what, push through whatever problems I may face. Thank you for being an awesome tinder. Oh, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Would you ever install a custom window tint with designs? Yeah, I'd love to. It just isn't much of a thing. So like chameleon film, I really wanted to get more into that. And then I was just really disappointed with what's out there. It's kind of hard to, you know, still, there we go. Um, I just wasn't happy with the quality of like any of the chameleon films that I ran into. So if somebody wants to bring one to me, then sure, I'll do it. But then when they find out that it's gonna cost the same amount, most people don't do it. Just change the Namir name to Cree Central and say it was on brand. <laughs> I like that. It's smart. Sorry, I'm just having a warning. I'm still trying to wake up right now. This is the second time I've like skipped off of this. <laughs> so much for, uh, I have no excuses right now. I'm just tired. Let me do this one more time. One more time. I'd probably be fine with that one. I just didn't like the way it skipped off. A thousand, thousand euros a day doing mobile detailing. Okay. You gotta take all of those examples with a grain of salt. It's not that you can't do it. It's that it's that some people are special. <laughs> so just keep in mind, any any business that you just want to start that somebody makes look very easy, there's a lot that they did to get where they are. They didn't just start and then have a bunch of clients all calling them up and yeah, yeah, no problem. They all had a grind and worked really hard to get where they are. And sometimes there's 
what is called first mover advantage. Or he identified a hole in the market and did a really good job capitalize on it, capitalizing on it. So what one person does doesn't necessarily mean it's just gonna translate for anybody else. So, yeah, you can do really well detailing, for sure, but it is a royal grind, too. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a lot. Did somebody give you decaf by mistake? I don't think so. I made my own coffee, so. I'll be all right. <laughs> Do I use a short roll or a long roll? I guess we'll use a long roll for the back and then a short roll for the back back. Got right here. Twenty. Fifteen on a windshield? No, it's too dark. All right, let's see if this one goes better. <laughs> a little draggy cutting through shit <sighs> too big of a perfectionist found a good shop that will do it for 400 so that's the plan now yeah if you're just looking to get a good tin job bring it to somebody that's gonna gonna do right by you I mean that's what you that's what you pay us for there's problems, we'll take care of them. You know what I mean? There's certain things that you can definitely take on yourself and do. Window tinting is one of those things where if you really pay attention, you can get a good result, but there's a lot of nuanced things.
things. So it's more for people that are looking to take it on as like a professional profession or professional hobby, side hustle, that type of stuff. Even side hustle is a little, a little interesting with it. Because it takes time. Tint the outside. Yeah, of course. That's how we do it. We tint on the out. We tint the outside. Little space on the side, little space at the bottom. For snap shrinking, give yourself, at, put the tint as much on the glass as you can, but you leave a little space on the side and a little space on the bottom, like the long side. So most of it, it is sitting nice and flat on the glass. So when you go to shrink it, You're getting as much of that curve. You're getting as much curve as you can to show, and then you flatten it all out. So, look at this. I have it set up this way, and I could shrink it on this side, I just out of habit, I always try and get more film on the glass, so I put my longest sides flush up on the window. Squeegee it down. Just gonna give it a little curl. That's all we're looking for. Oh yeah, and I gotta go around the other way. I don't know why I'm plugged into this one. That's okay. This one's already set up. That's it. Um, I'll try and point it right at the edge. Sometimes a little bit above. Really, you're just trying to shrink like I put the heat kind of right right in this spot here is where sometimes they'll do it. Um, that heat gun is round though, so when you're pointing it to at the bottom, like if you want to get this bottom edge, you're actually going to be pointing it like half half because this will be like the hottest spot here. But anywhere in that area, you're just trying to get like that. The end result is you get like a little bit of curve on this, right? So you can you can see these lighter fingers here. You can see exactly like I shrunk most of it right here. So then when I put this down, this edge is all laying flush too, right? So this is kind of right where I shrunk and all this is slightly stressed, but 
they're not very big. They're all kind of light. So when I go to squeegee these out, everything lays down nice and flat and nothing was really stressed and jutted anywhere. So it should snap to the window, but not give you any headaches with like staying down. And then if you have a couple of fingers on the bottom still, well then just pull it back a little bit and just give those a little bit of heat and flatten those out. I get asked a lot, like, hey, I snap shrunk my doors and I still have fingers popping up at the bottom. We'll just go a little farther next time. And it's really quick. So when you go to heat these things, you're letting the heat gun warm up a little bit. So then it gets up to temperature. Pull this film back. And then it's like, there's this sweet spot where all of a sudden like it'll shrink, it'll shrink, it'll shrink, a little bit, little bit, little bit, lot, right? So you're just trying to dance in that area of where, okay, now it's starting to do something. So you find where that sweet spot is on distance, ow, see? Like this is fine, I can hold my hand here. If I put it like, ah, it's hot. <laughs> you get what I mean? So it's like, you're kind of warming it up, finding where that sweet spot is, and all of a sudden it starts to react, so then it, it, it starts to become very, very quick. And when that happens, you gotta move that heat a little bit and get that whole edge to curl. or just enough of that edge to curl, and then you're good. It's a hard thing to show on camera, it really is. Anyone know Lexington Tint? My tinter installed them on my car without me knowing what brand it was. I mean, yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Some of them, I don't know. I haven't used them in a while. They, when I used it, he's city bro. All right, let's, let's dust off some clay bars that we used from last stream. Look at that. Yummy. Cold. Okay, now it's getting warm. So I'm the master plumber here. <laughs> so my hot water fixture is on the right and the cold water fixture is on the left, like down there. So I just hooked them up to these spots, not even thinking about it. And then I turned it on and I'm like, oh shit, now I have to switch them because hot water is on the right and that's confusing. But Hey, if it works. <laughs> if it works, it works. But yeah, leaving clay bars in warm water slash hot water and just kind of like massaging them around, you'll, get, you'll work some of that dirt out. You'll get, get all the cleaner spots to show. And the longer you leave it in warm water, it'll kind of all build up to temperature because they're really dense. So they take a little while to uh, kind of even out. If there's less than pure max or higher, there's nothing you really need to worry about. I gotta look at their lineup again. That's what I've been hearing. <laughs> Rip me. <laughs> Can you talk about, can you talk about uh, how we can start our own tint business? Where do we go? Do we need to be licensed? What needs to be registered, et cetera? Yeah, I can talk some about it. It's really not complicated. Um, there are no official window tinting organizations that can approve you to tint anything. Um, it's very much get film put on car, that's window tinting. 
Now, there are no perfect paths to learning this either, but it's helpful to have a space that you can practice. So whether it be like a, even a one car garage, somewhere that's out of the elements, you know, somewhere inside. So I always say, get some film, get some tools, and whatever car you have, just start practicing on that. And don't tin it once, tin it multiple times. Because every time you tint a window, even if it's the same window, you learn more. You get better, you get faster. There's so many little things off of just one door window because they all are very similar in their own way. You can learn so much off of just one car. So to start as a business, um, you need to make an LLC or, I mean, that's what most people do, so we'll just keep it at that for now. There's various business reasons to be other, like incorporated or LLC. Um, most tint shops are an LLC. So that's a good place to at least start. If you wanna to talk to like a CPA, somebody that knows how to handle finances, then uh, they'll guide you better than I will. But that's kind of like the rough getting started. Um, I use a service called LegalZoom. And they basically give you a bunch of forms you fill out some info, and then they mail it off to your local state. And then with that, once you're registered as an LLC, you'll get an EIN number, and that's like your, your business tax ID. So that's how you get like a business bank account. Do you have to register anything right away or can I just go in and start after getting the lease? Um, if you can just go get like a lease on a, on a commercial location, um, it's good to just get started and then work on the other stuff as you go, sure. Um, getting an LLC sometimes like, it can be, or sorry, getting a lease sometimes, it, it depends on who you're dealing with. So if you know a guy who's got like space for rent, then all he's gonna want you to do is like give him money and he might make you sign a contract. Some places are a lot more professional than that, especially if you're dealing with like a corporation that's leasing it to you. And they'll wanna do like a background check so that you can prove that you can pay the space <laughs> and you're not gonna burn the building down, right? It's like. Uh, it's like renting an apartment or something. They'll do a check on you depending on who's in charge. Um, so when I was in the home garage, I didn't have a registered LLC at the time. And when I moved into here, it was something that I had already submitted. So I was in process of getting it. And then I moved into here and they're just like, oh, hey, what's the, uh, what's the business name? And I told them and I asked, I was like, hey, I'm in the process of getting it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. So this place was very easy going where a couple of the other places that I talked to, they were, you know, uh, background checks, but the places were more expensive too. So again, it just kind of depends on what you're getting into. If you want like a nice freestanding building by the road that looks all nice and new, it's gonna be more expensive. Um, it's gonna be expensive. And obviously whoever has that building might be a little bit more professional. <laughs> Do you need an EIN to get a credit card machine? Um, as far as payment processing, 
kind of. So the world of payment processing has evolved quite a lot. So you have like Square and Clover and Zettle and like all these ones that are super easy to sign up for. So I don't know what all the requirements are of each one. I know that the ones that I've dealt with, like PayPal had PayPal here, and that you could just sign up for and it wasn't a big deal. But when you're taking payments as a business, they want you to be registered as a business. So you might be able to get by for a little while not doing that. But then they're gonna, they might like go like, hey, you need to just prove that you're a business really quick. And if, if you had an EIN number, yeah, no big deal, there you go, boom, nobody cares. Like, okay, thank you. We have that on file now, appreciate it. Because there's certain requirements that they're gonna have as well. So, you know, you can get by using some different cash app services, but you know, even they have to report that to the government too. So it sounds like it's a big step. Like, oh, well, you know, I'm just a guy doing it. Not really looking to make it a professional thing. But if you're accepting money for what you do, it's real easy to do. Like it's real easy to get one of these. You just, it's just a small investment on your end and you'll be fine. Or you can just say, sorry, I only take cash for every job. <laughs> but yeah, the, the difference of being a just the guy that's doing it and being like a professional business, the, the overlap there, like it's just, there's a very small difference there. It's a couple of paperworks and you're fine. So you don't need to actually have a building either. Like you could use your home address to register because mobile tinting, they just gotta have an address, right? They gotta have a way to contact you. And they want to make their processing, their, their fees, right? <laughs> That's how all this shit works. Everything's in a fee. Got to pay for this, got to pay for that. Got to pay, why? I don't know, it's just the way it is. That's why businesses, believe it or not, actually have to charge money for stuff. <laughs> we don't do it. We don't do it just because we want to make money. It's because we have so many fucking things that we have to pay for. Why do I have to pay for that? I don't know. The local government says so, okay. Taxes, okay. This, okay. Insurance, okay. It's just so many things add up and then at the end of the day you're like, okay, how many cars can I do? All right, I guess I gotta charge more. You need an LLC to protect yourself from lawsuits and being sued in your po own personal assets versus the company assets. Yes, that is a major reason why. So being a, a business, and like being an in incorporated S Corp, LLC, like there's all legal differences why some have advantages over, over other ones. As far as an LLC goes, Whatever you have registered under your business, people can sue for. And then all your personal belongings, they don't get touched. So it's a way to create some separation there. But, I mean, we're, we're, we're tinning windows here. If you heard of tin shops getting like, you'd, you'd hear about it if it was a, a big problem. So what's the likelihood? It's very little. But still, you're going to have to have some sort of, like, 
tax identification number as a business for a lot of small things like having a business bank account, um, insurance, and, and some other things. Because there's also tax reasons why you want to have it set up that way too and then pay yourself. I had an education of that recently. Logan Shop said they won't do Ford windshields because they crack from heat forming the tent. Is that legit or BS? So, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to it, but kind of BS. So, this is, this is a short answer, but I'm gonna answer it in a stupid long way. Windshields are laminated, meaning that they're two pieces of glass sandwiched together. And they do that with, with some front doors as, as well. Not all of them, but some of them. So if you put too much heat in any one particular spot on a windshield, they could crack. Because it's a, it's a temperature difference. And when there's temperature differences, wow, this thing goes like this. Look at this. Up, and then back over, and down, up, and down, and up. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where the normal is. Just, I guess, follow the dirt line. Okay. <laughs> So some shops will just not want to do windshields, and that's kind of like their excuse for not doing them. It's like, oh, if we tin it, it could crack the glass, and we don't want to be responsible. Being that it's a Ford windshield, um, Fords had these really crappy mirror tabs on them, um, where trying to remove the mirror would often cause the glass to break. So you'll then, in instead of... Uh, Instead of trying to remove it, you just create a little seam. Not a big deal. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but hey, it's better than a broken windshield and whatever. So that also could be what's going on. I just say, just do it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think windshields are a big part of the business, and to short yourself out on windshields, you're losing out on quite a bit. Have you ever ruined a car without business insurance, and so was it costly? <laughs> yeah, of course, I've damaged. Um, so the business has always had insurance, but whether or not they're actually gonna use it is a whole nother story, because like most people, like, what's your deductible? It's, it's for catastrophic emergencies. So if that vehicle, like, okay, for example, <laughs> there was a stereo shop that hooked up um, some new speakers in like this F-150 or whatever, and they did it in a really shitty way. And then the whole truck burned down. Something like that, yeah, insurance is gonna take care of. When you scratch a window, are you gonna get your insurance involved? No, you're probably just gonna pay out of pocket because it doesn't make any friggin' sense to get your insurance company involved. So it just depends entirely on the level. Even with what I consider most regular worst case scenarios is a damaged window. More terrible situations could be like a fried BCM, which even then, if it's like $1,500, getting your insurance company involved, you're probably gonna, at that, you're probably just gonna pay out of pocket again. Whatever it costs, yeah, just take care of it. It's for the bills that, that are really, really over the edge. How does the truck catch fire from speakers? Okay, so, there are, 
when you go into a more Detroit area, you get lots of hacky installers and cheap prices. So they shoved a ton of stuff under the seats, from what I heard. And it was just uh, two wires shorted together and arced and just caused the whole thing to catch on fire. <laughs> like, people put some mad systems in, like subs, new door speakers, and then like a bunch of amps and whatnot. So they just, they hacked all this shit in and the truck burned down. <laughs> yeah, that's like, where I got my roots was around a lot of these, these accessory shops. Not always hacky, like I worked some, with some really good installers, but I saw a lot of hacky shops too. But you have people walking in the door going like, yo dog, how much for a radio? I bought this one off of Craigslist. And then anything over like $100, they're walking out the door. So, you know, the market is the market and the area is the area. So you see some shit. And then just like, this goes both ways too. So people would bring in their raggedy ass cars. And I was so mad at this one guy. I don't mind like an old dirty car. That's fine. But when it's, when your brakes don't work anymore, <laughs> that's where I have a problem. Because I would just laugh. When, when you have like fog lights hanging off of the car and like half your bumper's gone and you're still getting window tint, like that's fine. I'm, yeah, sure, let's do it, why not? Do I think you should get your car fixed first? Yeah, maybe. Your priorities are a little weird, but... You know, I don't need your bumper to tint your car. But then I go to pull this truck around, and I damn near ram it through the, uh, through the garage door. It stops so close to hitting that garage door. And I'm like, I went up front, and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with your brakes? And he's like, oh, yeah, I need to get new ones. <laughs> No shit. And then everybody, like the sales guy is just like, yeah, that happens sometimes. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? See, they just, they all laugh it off. They're like, yeah, we get some weird shit around here. <sighs> Do you see that one post where you put carpet shield all over the interior? I did. I actually, I laugh, but I don't think it's the smartest of ideas to do that. Because when you're plastic wrapping the entire dashboard, the water doesn't have anything to soak into. So it's going to run off of the plastic right down the sides into areas that you can't see. So if you're going to do that much plastic, just put some towels as sponges up top so it's got something to soak into. But at least the surface was all covered. Car doesn't have to have brakes, throw it into park, it'll stop. You know, that's true, but when you have no idea ahead of time and you pull it around the building, so you put it out of park, drive it around the building, and you're going up to the garage door, and oh, sorry, I didn't say anything about it. You know, years and years of actually being able to hit the brakes and stop in front of the garage door and then you go to do it and then all of a sudden you're this fucking close and it just manages to stop. It would have been okay if I knew ahead of time. So some of that stuff is like, is funny to me, but that one was really okay. I, the, the consequences of that one, they would have tried to pin that shit on me. Like, oh, you're buying us a new garage door. Oh, you gotta pay for this customer's car. You drove it through a garage door. Even though it's his fault entirely, they put me in a dangerous situation. 
That's what really has me mad. Just crashing it through the garage door? Sure, whatever. As long as I'm not responsible for it. But this company would basically take bad sales out of their sales guy's paychecks. Like if they charge too little for a job, as punishment, they would short their sales guys on money. It's just, it was a bad deal. That boss needs to be tied up and whipped. Yeah, just don't Tim for him anymore. But yeah, there was there were just things like that that you hear now and again. And when there aren't a lot of options of of places to work, it's like you know, you gotta make some tough choices. But yeah, it was like, man, sometimes it'd be really frustrating. So when I, when I was doing mobile thing for another company, um, I had to deal with some weird situations. So like, I made good money, and what was really frustrating is like some of these stores, they would be flexible with the price and not ask the installer. So then you get put in the situation of uh, the sales guy is getting paid hourly. He sold the job for whatever he sold it for. You want to make whatever your regular commission is off of the job, which is supposed to be priced a certain way. And then you get a phone call saying like, hey, um, if you want your full commission on this, they're gonna take it out of the sales guy's paycheck. Well, now they're making you feel bad just for doing your expected job. It's just shit like that kind of drove me crazy. It didn't happen very often. So it's one of those things that you try and take on the chin, but sometimes that's this business. Getting, uh, having a quote unquote sick day. Oh, hey. Sick days weren't really a thing. RGC super chatted $10. RGC. Thanks, my man, for all that info. Aw. RGC, thank you so much for the 10. Yeah, man, you're welcome. Sick days were always a, a hard thing, too. So when you're not working, you're not getting paid. And then you hear about regular office work, and you're like, or a regular, regular job, where if you need days off, then you actually get days off, and you actually get paid for them, and you're allowed so many in a year. And I'd always hear that, and it's like, oh, it must be nice. <laughs> but every once in a while, I'd have to like try and take a sick day. But the thing is, the schedule is already full. And then they're like, can you take a sick day another day? Even though like I'm literally not getting paid to take the day off, and I'm missing out on money. It's just, no, I'm legitimately sick. <laughs> Sorry, you picked the wrong day to be sick. <laughs> like, fuck.
I know it. <laughs> Got yelled at. <laughs> I've never had a job with sick or vacation days. Same here. I'm kind of jealous. Because the whole idea of it is so nice, right? Like, like the idea of being able to take a day off and the business goes on is kind of a foreign concept to me. I'm really jealous. <laughs> so like when I when I was tinning um, for like my dad's shop, there were other people from time to time that could carry on, um, especially later in that whole career. But for a long time, it was like, no, if you're not tinting, we got to push off all that work. And uh, that part of the business is now dead. Oh, so it's like you didn't have anybody that could just come and fill in for you. And then doing that with the mobile company, <laughs> the, the people that were tinting now have to tint extra hard and try and manage extra appointments. And sometimes that wasn't just a possibility. So, But then at the end of the day, you, you look at what you get, or at the end of the week, you look at what you get paid for it. You need to try and take some of these things on the chin too, because you're getting paid better. But I'd just hear about it from time to time and I'd go, dang, sounds nice. So, I don't know how I missed it, but there's like a little piece of glue here. Now I'm kind of sad because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this out. Oh yeah. That's going to be a tough one. We might be able to finesse it, but even then, we'll see. If it's stuck, it's stuck. So it's like a little, little boogery thing. Not a big deal. We'll see. Yeah, I know, like. I know there's reasons to not like other jobs, too. You just hear the, the highlights, though, and you start getting a little jealous, and you're like, man, why can't I get a day off? But yeah, like somebody said in chat, your day off is, uh, <laughs> your day off is when people don't show up. But see, it is and it isn't, because when you get prepared for work like you're and you're in that state of like okay I'm ready to go and then like somebody doesn't show up and you get up and you go to the place and then you're like waiting around for the job to show up like it's it's kind of taxing on you like it takes effort and whatever where when you have a day off you just like hang out at hang out in bed and you're just like yay I got a day off I can go do other things I don't have to worry about any of that it's not the same. <sighs> it's a little guy. It's a little guy. On a car like this, out in the wild, I'd say it's probably gonna be okay. But this is gonna be the best vibe, so it doesn't stand here. It's a little guy. Little sneaky glue spot. Get a DOT job and use whatever. Use your time whenever you want. Yeah, but I'm too far in this now. I'm not complaining at this point.
I like what I do now. And if I want a day off, I just don't schedule cars. So that part's really nice. I drive a school bus, I don't get time. Yeah, it's not with every job. Can I get that piece of film to practice? Toyota Tundra windshield. Uh, that'd be pretty straightforward. Should be easy. Don't throw it out. It's garbage now. It's peeled off of the window. There's no way to save it. It's gone. No liner. Can't ship it. Do one today. Oh. <laughs> then I'll take the window out and then we can trade windows. That would be how you could save that. How many cars do you schedule on average? Oh, I only do. I'm only doing one car a day right now. So every day is a vacation now. No, some days are more than that. But for keeping things daily with the stream, that's what I was having to do. I also didn't have like a ton of appointments at the time either, so I was spacing things out so I could do stuff with the stream. Because that takes time. Will you ever consider switching to bottom, bottom feeding? <laughs> Got him. How do you decide what'll stay and what'll go? Um, yeah, so there will always be something really small, but when, so for example, on this one, I mean, it probably in most cases would have been okay, but I didn't like where it was and like, I didn't even wipe off the window and I could see it. So some of these really small things you wipe off the window, you let it sit for a little bit, and then you're like, you're looking around for a while, and all of a sudden, oh, there's, there's something right there. So if I have to search that much for like a little spot, it's probably fine. But if something is just stands out a lot more, then, then I'll say it'll probably be okay. You can, you can leave behind a fair amount of like little specks. For some, like everybody's different. Some people will jump in their car, say thanks, drive it. And, and then they couldn't be happier with the job that you did. And then some people want it, be, want it to be like uber, uber perfect. It all depends on the client. So that kind of stuff you just learn as you go. But what I'll say is like, if you got like a one or two little specs here, one little spec there, then you're probably okay. Just like try and make the next window better. But when you get into clumpy areas especially, so it's like you got like a whole bunch of speckles right in here and then like really grouping. When, when there's a bunch of grouping in an area, that's when I definitely say, no, that's, that's probably not gonna work.
like some fat garbage you get what you pay for. I used to think like 350 for a full car without a windshield was a lot for ceramic and then we like jumped up to like 450 and like for some places 450 is still like oh that's it that's all you're charging is 450 for ceramic and for some people that's really expensive so area does matter um but you know if people really have like a hard cap on where you are as far as like some of the higher films, then, you know, I understand. It's just like, yeah, my clients aren't paying that much for that film, so I can't carry it. But like a good color stable film A good color stable film is not much different in price per car. It's like what? <laughs> so with Lex, and, okay, <laughs> you guys, we talking like film companies here. So like, you can get about eight cars per 36 slash 40 inch roll. When you're using Lexan that it equals about like 15 to $16 that you guys are spending per car. <laughs> and then when you move into that color stable film, it's like 25, it's like 20 to $25. Pricing's sometimes funny. Too many people look at the full roll, the full roll price and go, oh, that's way too expensive. Look at what you'll spend per car and what you'll charge per car. Just by quality films. I agree. I agree. It's too much of a risk for me. Like it's, so for every car that you cheap out on, it's, you're creating more risk down the road. Um, and one way that I'll compensate for that is putting that on the company, not me. B711 HD super shattered one dollar and ninety nine cents. Fog, watch your other stream. B the whole scene, Alator Fog. B711. Thank you for the two. Oh, the fog is five dollars though. It's only set up that way because I would have people literally a dollar because that was the other thing. It's either a dollar or five dollars. People would sit here with a dollar and then just nonstop fog. $5 makes you think about it a little bit more. But yeah, there was a whole ton of fuck in the last stream. Thank you to everybody. That was huge. Okay, so took us a little extra time, a little extra film, but now I feel better because I don't have a little spot that I'm looking at every, every time I walk by this window. And especially like where it was. So if it was on this rear window, when they walk up to their car, maybe they'd notice it. But when you're sitting in the driver's seat, your mirror's right there. There's a little glue spot here. You're basically staring at it all day.
Four ninety nine or five ninety nine? Oh, I guess it works for four ninety nine. I don't know why it, does, it says four ninety nine, but I think it's like an iPhone versus Android thing. It's always four ninety nine. But B seven eleven. Thank you so much for the two. <laughs> People kill me. They come in thinking they're only going to pay one fifty for a full car tint because Joey jumpsuits the town over said he could do it for one fifty. <laughs> <laughs> because that Joey jumpsuits, man. He's always trying to get you. See, what's funny... When, uh... When you get people that that are telling you the pricing of another shop. It just, the response is simple. Okay, go there. <laughs> Sounds like you got a better price. Cool. Don't haggle me about it. I mean, be, be as nice as you can, but I mean, it's, Hey! <laughs> Supreme window tinting super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Supreme! Cents, about to fog you out. Do students keep the tint kegs in your class? <laughs> oh, there was a question attached to that one. Supreme, thank you for the five. About to fog you out. Do students keep the kegs in your class? Yes. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. No, no. Like, here you go. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. No, there's a whole bunch of goodies. I'll try and dig up the video that I posted in the Facebook group because it should be in the, in the listing too. You know, and like dash towels and all that shit. We didn't even like use the dash towels. So what the heck did I do? I gave away a whole bunch of stuff. But it's cool, when you have a bunch of people sign up, you can do stuff like that. So it works out both ways. It's like I've put so much effort into teaching on this channel and stuff. So when I get to like make something my way, um, like with this place, right? I slow down a lot. I'm not trying to get every car. Um, I'm trying to get more per individual car and then do the best I can with every car that comes in here. And with the classes, it's like, it's such a big thing to have to plan out, come out here, I understand they're expensive. And when I get to teaching people, I see like there's so many little things that can help you out. You don't need anything specific to tin a car, but there's so many little things that are better. And what I use, I feel is like the best that there is around to buy for tinning a car, at least the way that I do it. So then if I'm gonna teach people with the right stuff, then sending you home afterwards is like, then what? You just spend a lot of money to come out to an expensive class and then whatever you have at home, you gotta make do with. No, it's not good enough. So you get to take all the stuff home and it's really cool and fun. I would like to figure out how to make <laughs> everything I provide less expensive. Because <laughs> I was like this and that, and I really didn't look at the budget. And then I looked afterwards, and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, this is expensive. <laughs> but I'm not going to change it, so it is what it is.
do you have a cutoff on the age of the vehicles that you attempt? Um, kind of. So when it just gets into like, hey, I got like a 70s whatever, you know, it piques my interest. But sometimes it'll just be straight up and say, hey, I don't specialize in classic cars. So, and sometimes that also happens with just price because a car like that really is gonna take a while to do. And with enough time and effort, I can make it look good. What always kind of disappointed me about doing cars like that though, is all the, the shitty edges that they have on it. So on cars like this, we have nice ceramic borders. We can tuck the film into the sides. Classic cars, you have like, ugly, old, nasty, butyl borders that are falling apart, and you don't have anywhere to tuck that film. So you try and get as close as you can, and you don't want to leave gaps, but you still kind of have to, like, have a compromise there. So I don't like the amount of time and frustration that I have to get, like, a mixed result. So, I mean, generally a, a little overly critical on that stuff. But I just, I don't like doing them. Also, I don't get them, like, requests to do them very often either. So it hasn't really been much of a, much of a problem or anything. And I'd be much better at them if I just, if everybody was like, hey, I got this old car. <laughs> can you do it? If I got a lot of requests for it, yes, at that point, I'm going to take them on. I'm going to invest a lot more time. I'm going to become a lot more proficient in doing them. But when you get so many new cars and hardly any old cars, it's like you start to lose some of that skill on the older cars unless you just keep fresh with doing them regularly. People in Michigan, I don't know, generally, like, cars rust out. We don't have a lot of, like, I mean, we do have our fair share of classic cars, but not, not the same level as down south. There's too much salt here. I have a manual roll down windows and I'm still afraid. If I get my windows done 5%, I won't be able to see out the passenger window well enough at night to see the mirror. <laughs> Is that something I actually need to be worried about or should I roll the windows down before I start driving? Um, yeah, like late at night, dark roads especially, um, with interior lights, like you're, you're not really gonna be able to see out like, you're not going to be able to see as clearly on the mirrors and stuff. Yeah, you probably will have to roll the windows down. I'd go with the lighter shade. Probably 20. 20 or 15. You'd be better off. I mean, when it's, when it's somewhat challenging to see out of your mirrors without window tint, those conditions you put 5%, you're going to have a much harder time. So... <laughs> uh, oh, the five gang. You can see out. Oh, that's B seven eleven. You can see. You can see out of five percent. Well, I can. I got double five on my sedan. I can see twenty front windshield, five ish, eighteen inch trip. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys kill me because whenever I say like a, a general rule of thumb is like when you're going down to five percent your visibility is legitimately cut down. Um, it is harder to see out of the sides, and most of the conditions I'm talking about are just like, if, if it's the middle of the day, like regular daylight, you can see out just fine. It's, it's nice, it's comfortable. Um, when it's rainy, 
Um, rainy, rough conditions. Sometimes it's just challenging with all the haze and stuff that gets put in the air to see clearly out of your side windows, out of the front windshield, because so much of stuff is being kicked up around. And then especially at nighttime down like darker roads and whatnot. That's where like, you know, it generally gets more challenging to see anyways. Now magnify that with with 5% tint, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> it's not something that I can just put a broad disclaimer on and tell everybody, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's totally fine for everybody. Everybody has different eyes. <laughs> Stick my head out. It'd be sticking my head out getting wet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you tell me what your class has for somebody who is more seasoned in tinning but wants to get to your class? Or is it your class more for beginners? My class is for whatever you want to get out of it. So there will be people here that need a lot more catering. But if you've been tinning for a while and you want to be able to speed up, like, dude, I, I just, you see the things that go on here. If you feel like a class would be helpful to you, it will be. So it's hard to say exactly what kind of like schedule and whatnot we would run. Because the, with the first class, we primarily, we were cutting doors. Um, and then we took those door patterns and then we started installing them. And then the next day we worked on shrinking. And that's kind of where a lot of people ended up at. But if you want to get into like double cutting, snap shrinking, um, faster installations, like dude, I'm, I'm all for it. The class is what do you need to get out of it? I'm gonna make sure you get that out of it. I think that's the best way to like gear a class is just kind of, you have some rough structure to it, but then you try and identify where people's weak points are and then you focus on those. Can you explain doing the back window? I hear people saying sand down the defroster lines but it doesn't sound correct to me. Yeah, I've heard that too. Some people use like thousand grit sandpaper to knock down the defroster lines. <sighs> I mean, you do that stuff with like paint, so you should be okay. Most people say they are, but yeah, it's always got this like, I mean, it's sandpaper, you're getting grit all over the back window and stuff. Like the idea of sandpaper on glass just never sounded good. So I'll use a clay bar instead, but you don't really have to do much. Ooh, the 2004. Yeah, so the 2000, I said this right at the beginning of the stream. The 2004 vibe is gonna be way harder than this one. This one is essentially a big quarter window with a brake light. So this one's gonna be way easier. There's not much to explain here other than like, we're just shrinking. <laughs> Watch and learn on this one. Yeah, the other one would have hardware that I'd have to remove um, or cut around. And way dirtier. Um, let's see. Just makes me sad because I wished for your class like a year and a half, but I've literally watched hundreds of hours of your content have gotten really good already. Oh, that's awesome. That saved you a bunch of money then. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm definitely not going to try and sell you on the class if, like, it's just this. This is what they are. So, if you can tint a car inside of like a regular car in like an hour and a half, um, an hour and a half to like two hours, then then you're right. For most of the class, you're going to see the same stuff. So as far as like something tangible that you're going to get after it, it's, it's mostly going to be the tools. But what I've always found is when I, whenever I work with somebody else or get to talk to somebody else, there's always something that I seem to learn that I never thought that I would pick up. But that's kind of what I like about these live streams too. All that general discussion that you can get out of a class, like similarly happens here, but not, not quite in the same way. Because there's the tinning part, and then there's the business part. And I look at business way different. They just do. That's why this is all set up the way it is. Did you give a certificate? I did. And you know what? I made them myself. I was pretty proud of them. There's actually a picture on the, uh, on the website. I think they turned out pretty good. <laughs> This is before you had a class. I know. Oh, that was all from the same person. I actually went to Expel's window tint uh, thing too when I did their PPF score, like a 99 on their test. Nice. Um, this is before you had a class. I know. I put off classes for a long time. But now I have them, so. I got asked like a ton about classes when I first opened up this space. And I was honestly just settling into this whole thing. Um, and there were a lot of questions um, that people would have asked that, I'm, that I was frankly just not prepared for. Window tinning, sure. But as far as like the business stuff, it was all just like, well, uh. <laughs> Yep, if I do all these things, then it should work out. I hope it does. And then people are like, oh, OK. He hasn't really even done the thing yet, but he's seen it other places, so I guess it'll be OK. And now a year later, I'm a lot more confident in, in everything that I've done here. I understand a whole lot more. Tinting's very similar, though. does this go? A little higher, a little higher. Awesome. And I'm not going to boot my head. Towel.
We've got a scrubber, and where is my clay? There it is. Had a car the other day. They wanted the windshield tinted, and their wiper arm would hit the hood when you tried to stand them up. It was aggravating as all heck. Oh, I've had a few of those. Yeah, sometimes there's little, like, tricks to them. I learned that with, like, a Volvo. Chat was telling me about that, and it actually worked out pretty well. Some of the older trucks, I'm, I'm honestly not sure if that's where I would see them. So you can prop up, like, a rag underneath the wiper arm and kind of get it out of your way, but, yeah. Yeah, they, some of them that are just... They get in your way, and then you gotta peel the tint and work around it. They're annoying. So, this has a little brake light, nothing crazy. A um, little bit of space here. So, I'm just gonna try and sneak something in between and swish that all down. Two thousand ten plus Nissan. Gotcha. Well, I know it's not the Altima because I just got one of those. So maybe the Maxima. <laughs> All right some of that scuzz off. So as long as I've got a gap in between whatever I'm trying to tint here, like for a brake light, Sentra, that could be. I haven't done many Sentras. That would be a little early. So scrub it all down. Making sure, little little score there. I think this is an old glass. It's decently scratched up on the outside. It's not gonna be weird to find something inside. Just wanna make sure it's not glue. This is a great service to the community. I find it therapeutic. Oh, I appreciate that. But yeah, back to the brake light. So it's not really a big deal. It's kind of like any other car that has a brake light on the deck lid. Like this one has it built into the paneling. Just make sure everything's cleaned up around it. Slide the tint behind it and sweep it out. Oh God. <laughs> B711. B711 HD super shattered $4.99. Fog. Person in steamy room. Speedy. I just done my parents' 2010 <laughs> Sentra easy like buttery windshield and I just brought baby chicks from tractor supply for $100 for everything. I wonder if I should have done this the opposite way. But yes, there you go, you got the fog. B711, thank you for the five. Just done my parents, 2010 Sentra, easy like butter, rid the windshield. I bought baby chicks from Tractor Supply Company. What's baby chicks? That part, I don't know. Oh, little gap there. Let's make sure all those are covered. 
Looking good. Oh, you actually bought baby chickens. Well, okay, I know what baby chicks are, but I, I thought it was like, I done my parents' Sentra, easy like butter, or the windshield that I bought baby a hundred <laughs> What did chickens have to do with it? <laughs> I'm so confused. I tinted a Sentra, and then I bought chickens. <laughs> what am I missing? Is it, or is it just that? <laughs> I don't make sense. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's fine. Very happy for you and your chickens. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> have fun with those baby chickens. They need a heat lamp, just like Matt's. That's true. Keep them warm. Thank you for the five and the fog. See, sweep all that out. Should be good. So I went like this, and then what that caused is like this paneling is still down, so I can't just put it straight up. So I'd probably have to start it at the top and then tuck it up a little bit and go this way. Either way is a little a little funky, but There we go. <sighs> Brad Photo Super Chatted nine dollars and ninety nine cents. How did you? Oh, how did Tick to you know, I like to talk about these things. So, we can talk about TikTok in a little bit. Brad Photo with the 10. Sheba Dog rolling on the floor, laughing out loud. This is a super sticker. Aw, thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Look at that dog. Dog having a good time. Just making sure there were no messages. How did you grow your damn TikTok so fast? I've been trying to make some videos for Tint and I'm not having any luck. I have some theories. Um, it's easier if I show mine though and kind of talk about my thoughts behind it. I heard some stuff about the platform early on before I even jumped on TikTok. They kind of, I think they're really, really smart and some of your early videos results will impact some of your later video results. But that being said, a good video is a good video. Ooh, this is fun. I like this. B711 HD super shattered one dollar and ninety nine cents. Let's talk about TikTok. My views won't go up. So what I did on TikTok had nothing to do with this channel. There was very little traction from this channel at all that had to do with TikTok. And I didn't post any of my videos. I was very blank. And it's even called something completely different. It's Detroit Tin Studio. It's not Tin Studio. So let me finish these windows and then I should have a little time to talk about TikTok. So I can't guarantee views, but I can tell you a lot of the thinking behind what I 
what I did with mine versus just versus just uh, throwing out whatever there. I'd also like to uh, check out some of the other TikToks and just give my general thoughts because guessing, like everything's kind of a guess when you're posting to get lots of views. You, you're doing all, everything in your power to like, I think this will do well, but I don't really know. So nothing's a guarantee, but I just had some strong theories going into it. Canon. Canon. Oh God, it's not even open. That's why it's not working. Where's the call? Oh, okay. No, everything's okay. Cool. I was just making sure I didn't miss a customer call, but I think everything's good. Oh, it's still on. Still works. Good. Are you saying you need to start a new account to get that beginning traction? Possibly. And you can delete and then re-enable your account to try and start over. So this was something, a theory that I heard early on um, through another channel, um, what was it? Devin, Devin Nash's channel. So they were, they actually had a little TikTok competition where his whole community was basically like, he, he put up like, this was over a year ago now, I think, put up some money and whoever grew the best TikTok inside of a month got the money. And it was like a, it was a marketing exercise to see what was working really well at the time and, and just like how fast can you really grow a TikTok from zero to whatever in, in a month. And some theories that were tossed around in the beginning was it seems like if your first couple of videos don't pick up any traction, then the platform might flag you in a way where it's just like, oh, they're not really that interesting, so we don't need to feature them. I don't know if that's as much the case anymore, but what I do know is whatever new video that you post, you need to kind of think about it in relation to the last video that you post. Or some of the previous ones. So if you didn't do, if you did like a couple thousand views on a post and then your next one did a lot less on views and then your next one, mm, don't expect the world out of it. So if, for example, on like YouTube, if most of your videos are hovering around a couple hundred views and then all of a sudden you post a video that gets a thousand views, you kind of want to start moving in that direction of where the thousand views came from. And then what's really challenging is the creative behind all of it is always changing. So one interesting thing that you think of and you post, yay, and then you try and do the same similar thing again, doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work. So always going for big views is a very stressful thing. Oh God, I heard if you delete videos, you can be shadow banned. Have you heard that? No, but I deleted a video. <laughs> it's my last one and then I reposted it and it didn't do very well regardless. But I think there's lots of sneaky things that, that could potentially be there behind the platform. But I generally, I, I genuinely think that People come out strong with something 
And then a lot of people see it, and then the creativity kind of dies off. And so what was new and interesting for a little bit, people are like, wow, and then people move on. But it's not surprising on TikTok to get 100,000 views and then post another video and it gets far less views. But the main things that you want to focus on are rewatchability and things that can be shared and something that piques your you like, and you got to catch interest very quickly. Very, very quickly. You have to have within like half a second, I can understand kind of the context of where I am and probably where it's like, where it's going. So if I did a TikTok where all of a sudden like, I just like step in front of the camera, I'm like, hey guys, welcome to my TikTok. Well, then people are on to the next one. That's not gonna work anymore. It's kind of like just shut up and get to the point. And then when I made mine, I also kept in mind that nobody gives a shit about who I am. They just want to see the thing. So that was where I'm not even showing, like, I, I'm just like, wh what is the point of the video? Let's, we're just getting right into that. Did you see, oh yeah, yeah, so I was confused. I thought Elon bought another 10% of like Tesla, but no, he's taking over Twitter. Oh God, that's exciting and funny. That's actually really funny. <laughs> so he, uh, yeah, he, he jumped back on, on Twitter. Or, I mean, he jumped on taking over the board of Twitter. That's interesting. It'll be fun to see what changes, I guess. But I heard it wasn't really doing very well anyways. So, oh fuck. I think I just made a huge mistake. Oh God, I did that thing. I did that thing where I made a huge mistake and I didn't even realize it until the end of this. Oh, so much for easy car. You guys wanna see what mistake that I totally made? I was gonna talk about TikTok here. Now I don't think I have time. Any thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I grabbed that short roll thinking that it was 20. So I effectively just did 35 on the back, 20 on the rear doors, and uh, 35 on the front. I picked up that short roll that we redid. I just assumed that it was 20 because my short rolls are always 20, and I wasn't thinking. That flash moment when you're like, I wonder if I can just leave this. <laughs> no. Uh, it's too light. It's 35. Well, at least it's easy. <laughs> All right, let's get cracking. We got some work to redo. At least it was fresh. That's true. I know, right? I'm always throwing in surprises. Easy cars mean dumb problems. Get overconfident and then, oops, Ugh, what a dummy.
but I was looking at the back window, and it occurred to me that it, like, it looks a little light. But didn't think much of it. And then I thought, that thought crossed my brain where I'm like, wait, I just picked up a short roll. That short roll was 35. Ah, oh, shit, I did the whole thing in short. Oh, no. Where the back I did in a long roll, or the back doors. So the back doors are correct. I didn't do it off of the same short roll. But the good news is now everything is super cleaned, right? It happens. I just saw that corner started pulling up and I hope my window's long enough. Yep. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. I got lucky there. I want to talk about, I'm glad people are interested in TikTok though, or just social media, because it's interesting to talk about. A channel that you should seriously go watch and follow is, uh, is Devin Nash. He's a very good marketer, and he runs a um, talent agency. Um, so he hooks up like bigger, bigger streamers. He basically hooks up. Uh, Like, uh, hooks up brands with, uh, with influencers, I guess. That's what an agency does. So, he's, they're very analytically driven. So, they're always watching what platforms are doing, how they're changing, what's doing well, what's, what's different. And... I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> and... There's things that happen on these platforms that are, are just wildly unpredictable, but there's trends and stuff that happen from all of them too. So all of this is like necessary, necessary for your business on some way, shape or form, because it's just added exposure to help people try and find your business so you can do better. It's one reason we live stream so many cars. Part of it's marketing. Good and bad, it happens. Social media sucks now that Trump is gone. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's not the end. I'm not, we're not gonna get into politics though. Question, so I tinted my windows the next day I realized bubbles, not white, uh, it was water bubbles, what am I supposed to do? Yep, just let them dry. Somehow, it's kind of magical, but somehow the water dries. 
But the air does not ever leave. So if there were air pockets in there, then they stay behind, but all the water will leave. It's kind of magical how that happens, but that is how it is. But yeah, I don't, I mean, I have stuff that I like to wow. Oh my God, is this, what is this again? This is 20, okay. <laughs> I have stuff that I like to watch, but I mean, obviously I have a channel and I wanna see that channel do, do well. So I also watch a lot of stuff about channels. And then I pay attention to what a lot of channels do too. Kind of see what seems to be working well, what doesn't seem to be working well. Running a channel 100% off of live streaming is, uh, is a bad idea though. Just full disclosure on that one. This is probably, this is probably one of the best slash worst decisions that I've made for just growing a channel. Who's your, who's your favorite YouTuber? Uh, so there's Linus Tech, which is pretty regular. Um, there was a Michael Reeves video that just got posted the other day, so I'm always excited for whatever he has to post. Um, actually, that whole group of makers, they have a podcast. Um, I think so Will Osmond and his buds, I made a thing. That channel was pretty great, is pretty great. I say was, because I just binge watched everything. <laughs> they can only make so many things. But they're really funny in what they do. They're like, they're not stupid by any means, but they do like silly things with their, with their big brains. And that's great. I love that kind of humor. But they're like, hey, Let's do this really dumb thing, but it, it was really smart to make it happen. <laughs> like, let's crash a battle bot through a wall. Um, can I send it over my factory tent? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's factory privacy glass, so it's just colored glass. It's the same. You actually can't do anything to remove it, so you can make it darker though. Darker and ceramic it. What's the bar thing? Felt card. Yay, there it is. It's a soft felt card that I use to kind of organize the film as I'm shrinking. See, our wipers look like this a lot. So I could try and remove it, but it's kind of rusted. So I just kind of like to leave them alone if I can. This one's especially nice because it just stays up out of my way. Maybe we'll try that other way. Um, were they the ones that made the fishing pole powered by a gas engine? Uh, I think so. I watched a whole bunch of like all of their videos. Porter sedan starts at 290 for everything but the windshield slash sunroof. <laughs> Gas engine fishing pole is nuts, yeah. <laughs> 
Michael Reeves made the Boston Dynamics robot pee beer. <laughs> like, like literally months of work for something so stupid. So it had like a, um, it would scan the room, identify a plastic cup, walk up to that cup, and pee beer into it. Amazing. The level of genius and idiot at the same time, it's just, it's so perfect. Really, really funny stuff. He actually just did an interview um, with another smart guy's channel. Oh God, why can't I think of his name? These people could be saving the world, but look at what they do. I know, they entertain us, which is another form of saving the world. Because if it was all saved and we're bored, then we'll screw it up another way. Well, I'm glad this wasn't a giant back window or the other one. <laughs> I'd be a really sad person right now. But now it's like, ah, eh, it's okay. Do we do this the same way or do we do it the same way as before? Ah, eh, whatever, we're this far. Why not? Why keep going? Yeah, this will just be easier for me to slide in here. Like this. Shrinking with a glove? Some people really like it. I never took to it. Ah. There we go. See, that was nice. So with a card, I learned off of like a gold Teflon card. And then so I moved to a softer card because it makes more sense. I was. Occasionally, like, you wipe off a back window with a towel, you use a hard card, and then there's a little speck or something in between the film and the glass, and you rip right through the film. It's kind of like a big risk. Really annoying. It would happen from time to time, and I was very, very sad when it did. Because it'd still take me, like, 10 to 15 minutes to shrink a full back window. So that was 10 to 15 minutes that I lost. But with the felt card, it would skip over that stuff. So with a glove, I just didn't like not being able to press the film down very securely. It was always, you're just kind of like smoothing it down as you go. <laughs> what do you always tint twice? using only the orange side in April. I know, right? Every April. It's always the same thing. Tin schools in Oregon use the glove. Everybody's going to be different. I think having the option to try both is helpful, but I don't want to make it too confusing because if you don't know how to shrink, pick one and stick to it. Because you don't really have, you don't really have like the knowledge to play around with both necessarily. Like, I mean, if you kind of get the concepts at that point, then you can switch over and try a glove and, and then see which one you like. Oh God. Oh wow, it connected again. I'm, Give it some credit. I thought that was it. <laughs> so yeah. It's up to you. I just don't, it, it's, 
it's easy to get too confusing. So we had a lot of people asking, like, are you going to give fan tips or cone tips? And it, it's like, <laughs> everybody just liked what was on the, the sprayer. Like, nobody really gave it a second thought. They're just like, oh, OK, cool. This is great. So there'll be questions in here where somebody that's been tinning for a little longer or just generally curious will have a question, and then I get too far into the weeds on some of this. There's so many similarities between... Hi! <laughs> God, it scared me. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Cannon. RGC super shatted one dollar.
bugged. What's up? All right, so we're going to finish this. I have a, unfortunately, I got a windshield from Saturday. The Honda, I actually, there's, unfortunately, um, a handful of, like, little specks right in the driver's line of sight, and they were really small, so I didn't catch it before it left, and then it's just, it's right in your line of sight, so when you have something like that, I have to redo it. So I'm going to finish up with this one, um, which is pretty much done, and then we'll talk about TikTok for a little bit, but then I, I'm going to sign off of here so I can focus on doing that one. But it happens to me. Unfortunately, sometimes mistakes happen, but got to make up for them. Can we just run the show ourselves? <laughs> GoPro. All righty. So I was trying to be, I would have been a little further along. I mean, we're, we're pretty much done. But then we had to redo this. So I wanted to do the little Tic Tac stuff before we signed off, but hey. No, actually, this is pretty, pretty all set. Just gonna take the heat gun around the sides. So that was pretty much it with the back glass. Then just clean up, tape switches, we'll all be done. I gotta get my steamer set up. Looking good. If he left his stream going, then we would be his security system. <laughs> That's true. I don't even know how that would work, though. I mean, it's... It's not a... It's a bad idea, not a bad idea at the same time. Because if you kind of just go like all in on just like 24 seven streaming, then it's always there. But then people don't know when something is actually happening. And then there's a lot of time when nothing's happening. So then people just aren't gonna watch, but it's so extreme that it might actually pick up a little bit more different traction. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do it, but it's an interesting thought exercise. Sweet. Edges. A little bit on the edges. I'm going to drive to your shop one day and meet you. It's only about 1,200 miles. <laughs> hey, cool. Sorry, I'm streaming. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Just make sure I'm here. So I have my listed hours, but I'm not always here. That's why I schedule appointments, and then I'm here for all the appointments, and then when they need to pick up or drop off the cars. All right, looking good. That is another one. 35 on the front, 20 on the back, and 20 on the back. For real, not 35. Good God, what a weird mistake. I'm in Alabama, I wonder how far you are. Um, so from Huntsville, we're about a 10 hour drive. Cannon. I know because we have family. My wife's sister 
and her husband are in Huntsville right now. So we drove down there to hang out with them for New Year's. I need to do some fishing in Michigan anyways. We have a great fishing state. We've got lots of lakes. Yep, fishing is very, very big here. The Great Lakes State. Woo! They're all cold. Some of them are kind of dirty. Well, I mean, they're just not, they're not like clear water, right? You go up to the water and you can't see, see whatever. Okay, TikTok. Can we TikTok for a minute? So, like most people, I have been, I've been lacking on posting here. <laughs> I had like a TikTok a day or every other day, and then I fell out of, when you lose momentum, oh, it's so killer, and then you like have to fight to get it back. Here, we'll put this over here. Someone else asked, I've been using GeoShield Pro Classic Carbon a little better, or what should I be using from GeoShield? So the way to look at it is, what do you want to offer your, what do you want to offer your clients? So I offer uh, their Pro Classic, their C2 Carbon, and their um, Pro Nano Ceramic. And so it's kind of, how high do you want to go up on the heat rejection scale? That's what you're, that's the difference. So you're all you're getting a good film across the board at different price points, and the higher you go, the more heat rejection you get. So offer I say offer three. This is this is actually a really good TikTok that explains that. So watch this one. Is C2 Carbon better than Pro Classic? Um, yeah, it's uh, got 50% more IR rejection. So they look great, they shrink great, and then from there it's about getting little benefits in performance, and heat rejection is kind of the staple difference between one or the other. So it's not really like, which one do I pick? Pick three, and then good, better, best, your films. Watch this, watch this TikTok here. All right, so um, I heard about this crazy, the crazy trend, obviously, where it was like dark on the outside, clear on the inside. So this was like my first one. But this trend has been so overplayed that it's just doesn't make sense anymore. It's not a bad one, but it wasn't a very good one. And it was outside of the trend already. You have to be very quick to hop on a trend if you want to take advantage of it. Or else you're, it's like, yeah, a million people have done it and, and everybody's seen it already. Um, so from there, I had this awesome, crazy idea. So I bought two giant chocolate bunnies and then just did a ceramic versus dyed comparison in a time lapse. And I tried to make it as quick as I could, explain as much as I could, and then I played around with the text a lot until I, I had something that I felt was really good. And this one just kind of blew up. Um, but you don't see anything like this. And so having that kind of like a wow visual comparison, because with the, with the heat lamp, what, you just see it on a meter. No, let's try and put some visual context on it. So I thought this was a really, really good one. Um, from there, um, I was trying, with this one, I, I created some extra engagement actually, but it didn't really do much for the video. So one big trend that you see on TikTok um, is squeegeeing out windows. And so I tried to do like this bigger one where I clean the outside and then squeegee all the bubbles. But I attached like a little brain teaser thing to it. And it's silly, but it actually created a lot more engagement overall. And it, it created some more engagement, but didn't really get shared and didn't really get a ton of views. It, it's like within the first few days was around like maybe 10 or 15,000. 
which for some people, that's a lot, but then you start looking at these things in context with the one before it, right? So your first one, if it's really good, will get a lot of views, and then your next one, they seed it out to more people because people really like your first one, so maybe they'll like your second one. Based on those reactions, then they'll start reacting to the next video. And some things will just catch fire for no rhyme or reason, uh, but there definitely is a clear trend when you make something very quick, repeatable, interesting, um, it, can, it can catch. So then I went in like a silly direction. I had this great idea to redo a window with a, a Dyson hairdryer, make it look like I shrunk a window and everything. I think this one honestly went on a little bit too long. And it, it didn't do, it's got 27,000 views now, but it only did about like 11 for the first couple days. So it didn't, it didn't quite hit as well as what I hoped it would. Um, and then I had this silly idea to unroll an entire roll of film. And then, then I was like, oh, hey, I go bowling with it. This one was fun. I had a lot of fun with this one, but it didn't do that well either. Like, it did okay. It's done better now, but it was actually sitting around like the 10 to 15,000. So like, for context here now, this one did the worst. The bunny video was clearing like 250,000 views. So then this video, by comparison, is doing 10 to 15,000 views, not 250,000 views. You see? So on the scale of is it doing good or not, it did okay, but it didn't really take off. Um, then I started getting more into like some consumer style stuff. So this one was um, a couple of glue spots in the window and then literally just peeling the whole window off of the back window just to show then a level of quality because this happened live on stream. And I think stuff like this is really interesting. And it's just good marketing for my own, uh, for my own business. So that's part of this is like consumer PSAs, good marketing for my own business, um, and just trying out some different things. And all of these videos have a little theme in common with them besides just window tinning. They're short, they're to the point, and I have that TikTok voice. Let's see. Oh, no, use ammonia free this, glass cleaner. Right? I tape the switches and include this helpful reminder card. Can you guys hear that? What so. to expect with new window tint. Water yep. pockets need time to dry and dotted edges will appear white. Keep your windows rolled up for a few days. Only use ammonia free glass cleaner. I tape the switches and include this helpful reminder card. What to so it's immediate, all these videos are immediately getting into the thing and it's got the voice to carry it along. So I could have done that with voiceover in the background, but everybody is so familiar with this TikTok voice that it kind of just, you'll notice this from channel to channel. Um, people get familiar with the personality that's on the channel. As soon as you introduce somebody different, viewership drops. So being that I'm a new personality on TikTok, I was just riding the trend of, like, I, I'm not looking to promote myself. I'm looking to promote the business. Um, and to do that, I'm just trying to fit in line with everything else that's on here. So I wasn't trying to be a TikTok personality here. I was just trying to make some good, interesting to watch videos related to window tinting. This one blew up way more than I thought. So this one's 5 million views. It's my biggest video. Tinted car glass and is not 100% clear. Ugh, Police use these tint meters to check. You might have video. illegal window tint and not even know it. Untinted car glass is not 100% clear. Police use these tint meters to check what's really there. You might papers. have illegal window tint and not even know it. Untinted car glass is not 100% clear. Police use these tint meters to check what's really there. Okay, so something that I think is really, really strong with framing a video is 
what direction are you going in with the video? I could have been very one dimensional with this video and just said, uh, glass isn't 100% clear. But then I saw there is another video where a police or, or a cop put a meter over um, somebody's window and it metered at 0%. So this was part, I think, good timing. And so the direction that I went with this is instead of just saying your glass isn't 100% clear, I started out with a much might have a stronger statement, and that's you might have a legal window tint and not even know it. So instead of just saying your glass isn't clear and your tint may be darker, which like, uh, okay, how does that really affect my life? You may have a legal window tint and not even know it is all of a sudden now putting it from just one dimensional on being glasses, window tint is darker than what's there, um, than what it says on the box, to now we're talking about laws. Way, way broader, way more different, I think. And it just, you're kind of dipping into a whole nother pool of possibilities with that. Um, so with some of these, they're very like one dimensional that way, but I, I'm always trying to think about how else can we frame a video to give it that extra like, what else can we talk about um, that isn't just directly what we're doing. So then Cheap this window next tint one is expensive and dangerous. Within a few years, this one is this was very a window blurry tint job and bubble. Um, this was a window tint job that came in that was just old film. I had to tint the entire car. And so I just tried to make the best of this one for TikTok and it did all right. I don't think I've ever seen such a clear cut example of a blurry back window that picked up that well on camera. So this was one of those that is just like, wow, this is like what stood out a lot. And I have people that are just like, yeah, why are some of them like really bubbled and purpled and whatnot? So this was an explanation about that. And then machine cut versus hand cut window tint. I always like to just show these like clear differences um, as like simple and straightforward as, as possible as I can. And then from there, I'll kind of watch the numbers and try to identify what more people are interested in seeing. And then I followed up on the meter one with this one right here. Because one question that I see a lot is, is ceramic tint darker than regular tint? And this is three ceramic tints versus one regular tint, and they all say they're 20%. So this first one is uh, 16, this next one is 16, this next one is 17, and then the last one is 14. So not everything that I post does well, but the channel overall has more views um, just because I, I think I put a lot more time and effort and thought into what is the goal of this video and how can I make it just as simple, clean, and quick to the point as possible. Then it'll get lots of rewatches and potential shares. And those two things together, I think, are the strongest movers. Um, if you get shared, if you get um, rewatched, then, then you get posted more. And I've honestly noticed being a little vague can, can be really helpful. So when you have to rewatch something to like, you, like everything happens so quick and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what was that? And then you let it replay so you can watch it again and pick up on those little things rather than just have everything so direct to the point um, where you understand everything of it. It can cause this, that loop for you to rewatch it and then your video will do a little bit better. This was my longest one. This was a minute. And I was listening, or I was watching an MKBHD video. And he had this beautiful explanation with a little visual of pricing ladders. Because he was talking about some MacBook stuff. Um, or no, he's talking about an iPad and how Apple ladders their pricing. So I used that with a visual demonstration with my display boards up front. I thought it was a really, really interesting idea. I actually did really well. It moved a lot slower, where some TikTok views go really, really fast. Uh, this one was a lot more slower and gradual. The video was a minute long. So I don't know. I always try and stay to the point. I'm never like, hey, guys, 
This is today at the shop. Look at what we got going. It's boring. Nobody fucking cares about that shit. I mean, I, I say that as nice as possible. But people are there to largely be entertained or to learn something. And those types of videos, I think, will be the strongest. If you're trying to go in as like a TikTok vlogger, unless you're like something interesting is happening in that moment, it's not a, like TikTok is punchlines. That's largely what it is. Very brief tutorials, punchlines, and then you can also go live. So always look at it in that context. Does anybody have one they want me to look at? Like if you have a channel name, I'd be happy to look at it. Because there was a few people that said theirs didn't do very well. I'd love to just take a brief look at it. What triage is best? I've used the blue and orange, but they feel too flexible. Uh, I actually really like the, the, the blue and or the orange. The orange is like the most rigid one that they have. So if the orange one is still too flexible, so I've got, the green ones are based off of the yellows. So the blue and the pink were honestly like, is like my favorite type of feel with yellow being like a close third there, but they're all really, really good. So if those are too flexible, then you might not like try edges because the orange ones are pretty rigid. Show the purple Walmart tint in a TikTok. I don't have any purple Walmart tint, unfortunately. Um, I'd have to, there's some videos on the channel that I could maybe clip into being TikToks. I thought my shaved edge would have done better. I, let me see. Let's go, let's go and look. I will give you a 100% unbiased opinion. This first one is definitely not TikTok. There's too much advertising in here. So, there's, so that being said, there, there's always potential that you're going to get business off of any of these. And we'll, we'll get there. So I understand this one's old, but you'll start to see a little bit of a trend where you're, because your old first ones were kind of just like basically making ads, then you have to, in my opinion, you have to kind of dig yourself out of a hole now. And then you have to identify what your TikTok really is. Because um, I, I don't think one TikTok, one good video, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Yeah, even this one. I think this is interesting. I think you should get rid of the uh, ttownstints.com. I think you should say something interesting or funny like this windshield looks like an ocean or I, I don't know, something that would just be like, and then all of a sudden you see through it. So I think there was a way to frame this to make it more interesting, but instead it was just a business thing. Oh yeah, no, oh, that's, yeah, that's one reason we have it muted because I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> In a heartbeat on TikTok. Um, so the shaved edge, unacceptable gap. I think this is what? This is going to be the shaved one? Is this it? Or is there another one? This one's better, but this is very much an ad. As a business, you don't need to make ads on TikTok. You need to have a link in your bio where people can find out about you, but you need to, that's it? Okay, okay. I can help you fix this one for potentially another one, but there is a very before and after difference that's really interesting. I would start it there, right there, 
and maybe go a little bit less. So it's, you're kind of like, it's, it's dragging on a little bit long for what you're showing. And then you're going over the nice clean top edge. I think you can spend maybe a little bit less, but that's a fair amount of time there. But I like the beginning that says unacceptable gap. And then you just get into right fixing it. But I would get rid of your logo and phone number and everything. For sure. Make it a little bit shorter. Make it a little bit more to the point. Get rid of the logo and stuff. And it's not that. Look at everybody else's TikToks. And the popular ones, how many people have their logos and shit on them? No, they make TikToks to entertain people on TikTok. That's what, that's really something to keep in mind for these. So it's a really cool before and after. And it did, in comparison to your other ones, it's done pretty good. Your other one, 25, 750, 650, two, three, 100. You know, you're going up here. Um, it starts to get like a little more TikTok-y. Um, and then you get to this one right here. And this one is clearly done the best. So by your track record, this one actually has done better. This is showing you, yeah, start moving in this direction a little bit more with some of these. But I think you could have made this a little bit cleaner and it, it possibly would have done better. But you also got to look at it with, in the whole context of your whole channel here. So the more videos you start to do that start generally doing better, then the next ones will start picking up more steam. So when you just come out of the gate swinging real hard with a good video, I think they're just like, whoa, people like this channel. Let's show them to a lot more people. But when you've kind of identified yourself as somebody that doesn't get that many views with some of your previous stuff, you got a little bit more of a hole to dig out of. That's, that's honestly what I think about it. And then, unfortunately, this is for tinters. This type of stuff is like, is for the tinter community. So whenever you want to like mix in one of these very like tint niche things, I think they'll only go so high. I think peak broad, pink peak broadness is really just being very clear cut straight to the point, but you lose a lot of personality out of it, right? But I think it's hard to get any type of personality in TikTok. I think it's more about like as a shop, your, your goal, I guess, is to try and get more business. So doing things that show that you're a step above everybody else, I think in, in an interesting way can speak volumes and potentially get you more business that way. But you don't need to put like your logos and stuff. It's, it's 2022. If people want to find where you are, they can find you very easily. They just now, oh, what is this shop? Let me click on this. I'll go to their profile. And then instead of having this be TintWiz, I would make this like your, or add your website in here too. That's where you can put like your phone number, your website, and then use your link as the most important thing. I would generally push people to my website um, before I push them to like any type of like a quote lead thing because they can find this through your website. This looks weird. I don't know if I'd click on that. But this is good. I like this. I hope that was helpful. But that's kind of the way to look at some of these things. So just when I got asked, why did you get a bunch of views on it? That was a lot of the thought that I put into it. Those, those differences are huge. Look at, look at what pops up in your feed and try and be like everybody else in terms of like not exactly what they're doing, but how, how they're presenting it to you. Time lapses, straight to the point things. You don't always have all the context for what's going on. And it's just you're all of a sudden in there. But you can kind of fill in a lot of context with your, with your own imagination. So you don't always have to be super explanatory. This was something that I had, a problem that I've had with a lot of my videos. I used to be like, hey guys, I'm Matt. Welcome back to my channel. Be sure to like it. It's like people get it. They're over it. I, I don't even have an intro anymore. I think just literally getting, having that hook at the beginning that gets you invested 
and then getting right into what you're doing and just keeping a pace is really important. Then otherwise people skip. People skip, people click off the video, they're like, yeah, 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 I get it, okay, yeah, you want me to like and subscribe, everybody fucking says that, whatever. Like, they're over it. All that stuff is really important. But that was fun, I like that. Dashboard. Dashboard. All righty. So we're going to shout out some super dupers. Um, big shout out to RGC, B711, Brad Photo, B711, Supreme Window Tinning, B711. Wow, there's a whole bunch from B711 HD. Thank you. RGC, Daniel Reyna, and Kendall Roberts. Thank you guys so much for the supers. I really, really appreciate it today. Tomorrow, tomorrow's Saturday, isn't it? Unfortunately, no. There's a lot of weird stuff going on tomorrow. So I've got like, I've got a couple of smaller jobs and, uh, and then we're getting something delivered here too, but it's for, it's for home. It's just getting delivered here. So I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be streaming, streaming tomorrow. I think my wife and son are gonna swing by for, for a good part of the day. So I'm gonna hang out with them while I'm working. Wait, oh, there's another one. B711. B711 HD Super Chat at 99 cents. <laughs> B711, thank you for the dollar. Uh, one dollar, two dollars, so that's three, five, that's eight dollars, eight, nine, ten dollars. I think ten. I think you're at ten even. That's how I had to do a little quick math there. I'm not great at that. I was 13 seconds behind the streams. Oh, that's, that's always annoying. That happens without me noticing for a lot of them. Then you if you click the, I didn't know this until later. It says live in the bottom left corner and it'll be red when you're current and you can actually click on it to go to the newest part. I didn't know that for the longest time. My wife actually pointed that out to me. Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> Daniel Reyna is the GOAT every stream he supports. Yeah, yeah, he does do a lot. I really appreciate it. Yesterday was nuts. But don't feel like you, if you do it regularly, don't feel like you always have to. You can always just hang out, ask questions. It's all good. I didn't know it was the part you were shouting super chats this way. Yeah, I, I kind of thought so. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope that was helpful. I have I don't know. the The way I've looked at a lot of things with uh, with social platforms with business is like there's things that work and there's things that don't work, and um. Oh, okay. Cool. I was like, I don't think I hurt any feelings or anything. But the way that I look at a lot of this stuff, or try to, is always be as objective as possible. There's things that work, there's things that don't work, and there's things that I would rather do. But if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. We can keep trying to like beat that horse. What's up? Yeah. Here we go. Um, does YouTube take a cut of your donations? Yes, yes, they take 30%. And there's things that I could do to change that a little bit, not directly through YouTube, but it's just easy and fun. And then it allows fog machines to go off. 
So it's just part of the game. They got to make their money too. They make an awesome platform. They give everybody free videos, which is very expensive to do. I have a lot of appreciation for what they do. Dang, 30%? It's. <laughs> When you are the platform and you do things like they do, I'll get, I give them so much credit. They do a lot for creators now. So yeah, 30% is a, is a decent number, but. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you. 30% is a decent number, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's part of how it is. They integrate it into the system. So there's way to like, have an external link and do it differently. But then it's just you have to explain it all and it's it's just it is what it is. I don't I don't like friction. I guess that's what I'm trying to say with it. Like I I don't like having to just like everything to be pretty self explanatory. Just it is what it is. We have fun with it. And I have a good time. Um <laughs> But it was helpful, but of course I get a phone call, so I pause the video and I get to play, I gotta play a case up. You'll learn some stuff from it, I think. I would have liked to have heard your opinion around it, but um, I guess next time. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? No, this is Matt. Oh yeah, that was a while ago. Um, not this weekend. Uh, we're right into busy season right now. The let me see when the earliest Saturday that I have. Cause yeah, we're a day away from this Saturday. Next Saturday is book two. Um. And the 23rd book, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he's an old removal. The Saturdays, they, they just keep booking up. Um, the earliest that I have is going to be the 30th for a Saturday, but I, I do have plenty of availability before that. It's just for a Saturday specifically, it's going to be it's going to be a little ways out. Um. Thursday. Um, I have a spot on Friday. I could get you in at 10. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, no problem. Bye. I'm booked out that much for Saturdays. Saturdays are special days. Saturdays are like more people have days off. They book, then they book another one, and then, and then those start getting farther out. My good. Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Hello. Good. How are you? Yeah. A GT five. TT five. Like an Audi TT. Cadillac TT5. CC5. <laughs> CT5. I don't know why I was so confused on that one. Um, oh, yeah, because they moved from the CTS to the CT5. CT5, CT6, oh, okay, I've done a bunch of C, it's been a minute since I've had a CT5 here. Okay, all right, yep, I'm all up to speed, sorry about that. Yeah, I've done a bunch, I've done them before. Um, the, do, were you looking to do all the sides in the rear or did you wanna do a full windshield with that? Yeah, for sure, so it depends on the films that you wanna go with. Um, so starting on that car, all the sides in the rear would start at 290, 
um, it'd be an additional 130 for the full windshield. Um, that would be in our color stable dyed film. We have uh, up to a 50% in that film, and then uh, we also carry carbon and ceramic films that have added heat rejection. So basically the higher that you go on the film grade, the cooler it's gonna keep your car in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Um, we're a little booked out. I got a, I might have an opening for next week, but it might be, I think it's about to get filled, honestly. Um, after that, then it would be Friday the 22nd would be the earliest after that. Okay, sounds good. Bye. No, I totally misunderstood it. Like, the CT5, but I'm like, I heard it as a, like a TT5, and then it was like CC5, and then CT5, and at that point it was too confusing, and it's like, look it up, it's like, oh, duh, CTS, CT5, CT6, okay, all right, all right. I don't know why I had such a brain fart on that one, but yeah, that was, that was fun. All righty, well, I actually, I gotta take off, so, Thank you guys so much for today. I appreciate it. Hope you learned something. Um, hope you're smarter about TikTok too. I gotta post some more stuff there. I have just let that thing die, and that is not good. But thank you guys so much. Y'all have a good one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.